Hey guys, welcome back to Fashion Club. Today, we're going to make a bow tie or a hair bow using a t-shirt. But first, let's go to our vocabulary. Surface design is any type of pattern, picture, material, or drawing applied to a surface. In this case, our t-shirt. An accessories designer designs and creates jewelry pieces, handbags, hats, belts, gloves, scarves, and other items that will be used to complement clothing. A bow tie is a necktie in the form of a bow or a knot with two loops. A stitch, in terms of sewing, is one in and out movement of a threaded needle or when a needle pulls thread through fabric into a loop. That's what we call a stitch. Basting stitch is a loose stitch, temporary usually, to hold together layers of fabric. We'll be using that today to hold our bow together. And the last vocabulary word is whip stitch. Now, whip stitch is when the needle is passed in and out of the fabric, but the stitches circle the edge of the fabric. We'll work on that a little bit later. We're going to practice with those. So let's go to our history. The bow tie originated around Croatian mercenaries or soldiers during the Thirty Years' War of the 17th century. They used a scarf around the neck to hold together the opening of their shirts. Upper-class French citizens adopted the look and they be turned into today's neckwear, which is the bow tie and necktie. By the mid-1880s, the bow tie had become a major staple in a fashionable man's wardrobe. And then they moved into women's wear in the 1920s and 30s when the look was picked up by movie stars Marlena Dietrich and Katharine Hepburn. This paved the way for the acceptance of women to wear masculine clothing. Either way you slice it, bow ties can be made out of several materials and they really do change the look and dress up different kinds of outfits. So what do we need for our project? Well, only need a few things. You need a t-shirt, a light color or a white t-shirt. You'll also need a needle and matching thread. So the thread has to match the t-shirt that you choose. A ruler, a scissor, permanent markers, any color you'd like. Fabric glue is optional. And for the hair bow, or hair, uh, a hairpin or hair clip. Upcycling is reusing objects that you're going to throw away. So if the t-shirt is worn or stained, it's absolutely perfect for this project. Okay, guys. So whenever you're doing a project, it's good to practice first to make sure that you have um, the, what's required in order to complete it. So we're going to practice the two stitches that we need for this project to make our bow tie. So first things first, safety is super super important i know that this uh needle is very small or it looks small but here's the thing it still has a very sharp edge and so you want to be very careful when you're using this that you're not just um you want to be careful that you're focused on what you're doing and you're not distracted when you're working with um any kind of tools for sewing um and so you want to make sure when you're finished with this or even finished for the day that you put it away in a place that's um that's safe and that it won't fall on the floor um, because all kinds of things can happen. You know, pets can pick it up and eat it. You can step on it and that's not safe. So you want to put it away when you are finished working with it in a place that's safe, okay, and secure. All right, so with a regular needle, you have a little hole at the top here and it's called the needle eye. And so that's where the thread goes through. So I'm going to take a piece of thread. Now I'm going to use the same yellow thread that uh, I used for the bow tie but i'm using um a lighter piece of fabric just so you can see what i'm doing a little bit better okay so the first stitch that we're going to use um today is called a whip stitch okay first let me show you what i did so you always put the thread through the eye of the needle sometimes you get it on the first try sometimes you don't and so just keep on trying to put it through you might want to use um a needle with a bigger eye for this project or a larger needle so that it would be a little bit easier for you to work with especially if it's the first time that you're trying this out right okay so after I have my 
needle threaded. I have a double strand of thread, so it goes a little long. I'm gonna put a knot at the end of my thread, right? You wanna do like two or three knots to make sure that um, the thread doesn't go anywhere when you push it through the fabric. Right? Okay, so we have our knot at the end of the thread and we have our needle threaded. So I have two pieces of fabric here. Now the first stitch that we're going to learn is called a basting stitch. Now some of you that were working with me earlier in the year and in other fashion years, fashion group years, you know that when you're using a basting stitch, I have my two pieces of fabric, a basting stitch goes straight into the fabric all the way towards the back and then oh my fabric's a little too thin all right one more time so it goes all the way through and then when you when it's time to come back into the fabric do not push your fabric or take your thread and come over the edge you have to put your needle in on the same side that the thread just came out of so you come in and you push your fabric, I mean your needle back through the fabric from the back side. And then you do the same thing, you push it in from, see now that the thread came out on this side, you push it back in on that same side, all the way through, right? And so now it looks like this. And then now that the thread is on the back side of the fabric, you're gonna go a little bit of ways over and push your needle in, right? And I'll do one more. So again, the thread came out from the fabric on this side, so we stay on this side and we push it back in. Basting stitch is a very easy stitch. It's usually used temporarily, meaning that it doesn't really just stay in a, a garment, but um, usually pull it out, but that's the basting stitch. So we're gonna use this stitch and I'm gonna take you to the second stitch that we're going to use as well. Okay, so we did our basting stitch, right? And this is what it looks like on the front and the back. Now, when you're sewing a garment, you continue until the end of wherever you need to sew. So you continue doing the same process. The next step we're gonna use is called a whip stitch. And a whip stitch is um, a long or a vertical stitch. So I'm gonna push my needle in the fabric and then I'm gonna pull it out. Instead of going across, right, I'm gonna go straight up and down, okay? And so, it looks like this. Now, when I come back down, I'm gonna go a little ways over, a little bit next to where the first stitch came out, and I'm gonna push right back in and up again. Okay. Now you notice that the stitch came out diagonal, but I did not do anything to make the stitch come out diagonal. I still stuck my needle straight up. Okay. One more time. So I moved over a little ways and I'm going to push my needle into the fabric and straight up. No angle, no nothing, but the stitch will end up coming out at an angle. Okay. I'm going to do that one more time. I'm going to push now. Listen, my stitches here I'm gonna come down a little ways over push the needle in go straight up make sure that your thread sometimes your needle gets stuck behind make sure your thread is in front pull up and that's what we call a whip stitch okay and it looks like this on the front and it looks super duper straight in the back Okay, practice these a little while before you start your project. Okay, so the first thing you're gonna do is find a flat, uh, clean flat surface to put your t-shirt on 
lay it out, smooth it out a little bit so that there's no bubbles or anything in the fabric. And then you're going to take your ruler and from right under the arm all the way across, you're going to draw a line with one of your, any one of your markers, um, but draw a line straight across the, um, from the underarm to underarm. And then you're going to cut along that line. So you want to save that top half of the t-shirt for a project that we're going to do at another time. And now on the bottom of the piece that you just cut off, on the side there where the side of the t-shirt would be, you're going to cut off, sorry, you're going to cut the t-shirt apart to make two pieces. So you're going to cut down that side and then you're going to cut down the other side. The great thing is you only need one piece or one piece of fabric for this t-shirt. So the other piece you can save for a different project or save for later. So the next thing you're going to do is you're going to take your ruler and you're going to measure 10 inches, a 10 inch square across the bottom, excuse me, 10 inches across the bottom, and then 10 inches from the bottom to the top. Now make sure that when you look at your ruler, you're using the inches side. There's two sides to a ruler, okay? Make sure you're using the inches. And if you're not sure, the side with the wider lines is the inches side, okay? So draw a 10-inch square. And then once your square is drawn, you're going to cut that square out. So it has to be 10 inches on each side. And then cut that out. Okay, now that you have a 10 inch square cut out, then what we're gonna do is make sure that you have something underneath your uh, piece of fabric, your 10 inch square. So I put a piece of cardboard. You can also put um, a few sheets of paper because remember we're using permanent markers. So we don't want the permanent markers to damage our countertop or our floor or whatever we're using to work um, to work on. Once you have something that will absorb the permanent marker um, and that won't mess up the surface that you are um, gonna draw on, you can draw any design you want using your permanent markers in any color that you want. So you can decide if you wanna do hearts, stars, you know, unicorns, whatever you want to draw. It actually doesn't matter of the picture you want to draw a design that's abstract and abstract means that it doesn't, it's not like a, a picture of a horse or a picture of a tree or a picture of a certain thing. It's just lines and shapes because remember we have to fold this up to turn it into a um, bow tie. And so you won't be able to see an actual picture. So you see that I'm drawing a bunch of lines. I'm going to do some dashes, some, um, some dots, um, and in any color that you guys want. So you can have fun sort of creating your design. Also remember that you're using a white or a light colored shirt because you wanna be able to see all the colors that you're using and have them show up on your t-shirt. So you don't wanna use a t-shirt with a very dark color. I would stay away from bright red or blue um, or any other color besides like white or lighter, lighter shades of those, of those, of pinks, of light blues, of light greens. You want to make sure that your markers show up um, and the design that you make can be seen.
Okay guys, so like you saw at the end of the last clip, I folded my uh, 10 inch square. I turned it around to the wrong side or the inside and then I folded it down so that the right sides were showing. So I'm doing that again here. The side that has the hem for the shirt, we want to put that closer to the top. Once you set that up, you want to then thread your needle. So get your needle, thread it with matching thread. Make sure again that you're doing this um, in a place where you can work safely and that you're not going to get interrupted. You want to keep your focus on doing uh, the sewing. You're going to thread your needle and once you thread your needle, you are going to whip stitch the piece together. So right where the hem meets the top of the bow tie, the top of the fabric, you're going to whip stitch that. If you're not sure how to do a whip stitch, go back in the video so that you can see how that's done. When you do this, you want to make sure that you're not catching, going all the way through you only want to catch the first three layers, excuse me, the first two layers of your fabric. You don't want it to go all the way to the front. The stitch is not going to go all the way to the front. Okay, so once you've gone all the way across that 10 inch uh, section, you're gonna tie the end off, make a knot in the thread to hold it together once you're finished, and then you're going to fold the piece into three sections. So you're gonna fold it, take one end, put it to the middle, take the other end and put it to the middle. Once you do that, you want to overlap them a little bit. And once you do that, you are going to sew the whole thing together. You're going to go all the way through and you're going to do a basting stitch through all of the layers. Take your time while doing this and watch your fingers. Make sure that your fingers are out of the way of the sewing needle. But you're going to sew through. Okay, now that you have done that part, you're gonna take a different piece of the t-shirt. So remember when we cut out that 10 inch square and you might've had a little bit of the t-shirt left over? Well, go back and get that piece. And at the bottom where the hem of the t-shirt is, the bottom of the t-shirt, just cut the rest of that section off. We're gonna need it for the next part. So go all the way across and try to keep you're cutting as even as possible and follow the line of the stitch that's already in the shirt, okay? Okay, but before we get to that piece, the next thing we have to do is we have to create the bow tie shape. So you see me pushing together the middle of our new bow tie right and once we push that together we're going to use the same basting stitch so you make sure your needle is threaded 
and go all the way through all those layers. Now, it may take you a little while. You may need some help from your mom and your dad to push through or your parent or guardian to push through all of the layers. But you want to go through all the layers and create um, that bow shape. Push the centers together. Now, you see that I'm at the back of the bow tie. There's a little less fabric back there. So it's a little bit easier to push your needle through. So you may not be able to go through the direct center. You can go towards the back and just hold it together so that you're able to create that shape. Okay, so you see I'm like towards the back of it, towards the edge. And you're going to go back and forth the same way you would for a basting stitch. Okay, so now go back to your pieces of your t-shirt and find the piece that has the longest or that's the biggest. You're going to cut off the very bottom hem of the t-shirt all the way across, okay? We're going to need those that piece to create the center for your neck, for your bow tie, and also the, um, the strap for the neck. Notice how the way that I'm cutting, I'm cutting a little bit extra. So it's like almost double the size so that you're able to fold it down a little bit. So have your parent or guardian help you with that. You can also use your ruler to create double the size, right? And that's going to create, that's going to involve math. And you want to make sure that your measurements are correct. You see me folding it over because you want it to be as neat as possible. Okay. And we're going to need to use that because we have to cover the center of our bow tie with one piece of that. I'm folding it over. Now you can use glue here. If you have a fabric glue, you can use a fabric glue. You're going to fold the little edge piece under so that it stays neat. And you can glue that in place with either fabric glue or hot glue. Or as you're going to see me do here, I'm going to whip stitch that together to hold it in place. Okay, and so then now our bow tie is almost finished. So we're going to take the last piece of the part that you just cut off, the hem that you just cut off. We're going to fold it into um, two. So we're going to fold it in half, and then we're going to whip stitch that. So remember our whip stitch. We're going to put that uh, whip stitch right at the top so that it's neat. And we're going to go from end to end, all the way across the long end. Once that's done, we're going to take the shorter ends and we're going to fold that in a little bit. So you see me folding it in one time. And then we're also going to stitch that down. You can use either the basting stitch or the whip stitch for this. But make sure that um, both sides are done and that they're neat. I actually used the basting stitch. Okay, so now we've got our bow tie. We've got it all decorated. We've got our straps and everything on. If you want to turn this into a regular bow tie, you can use that at the next strap. We'll do that in a second. But if you wanted to turn this into a bow for your hair, you can totally do that. Now, I have a clip here that I got from the dollar store. You get them in, in packs of six and eight. You can just glue that onto the back of it. Or you could also use... Um, 
a bobby pin if you wanted to do that as well okay so either or so you would take it you would put the clip on and you would glue the edges all around of the clip onto the bow and then when you're done you would just close the clip in place but make sure that you go around all the edges to make sure that the glue stays and that you let it dry before you start to use it and then that's your clip for your hair if you don't have a clip that's fine and there's no there's no problem you can use a bobby pin some of us have bobby pins uh you know in the house already so you can just slide the bobby pin in through the back of that um center strap and just put it onto um your hair that way now for the bow tie that strap that we created the very long strap that we created in order to close the bow tie you can use a couple of things um i usually buy these hooks from the dollar store um but if you don't have these or if your dollar store doesn't carry those kinds of sewing supplies they're called pant hooks like they're usually for pants but I like the way that they um, that they work. They go just one big hook and eye. Um, and you put that onto the ends of the strap for the bow tie. If you don't have that or, you know, you don't have a dollar store that carries those kinds of um, sewing supplies, safety pins work really well. You want to just fold in your um, strap and you're going to put the safety pin so that it's on the inside once you put it around the neck um, and under the collar you're going to put the safety pin at the um inside of the strap so it's not seen and then fold your collar down and you're good to go Okay, so here we have our finished bow tie. I hope you enjoy doing this project. Have fun making it. Take your time. There's no time limit on it, so you can do a little bit at a time. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe, and see you for the next project. Bye, guys.